If you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn with me this morning, turn to Genesis chapter 11 and Acts chapter 2. We're going to read two passages today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So good to see so many smiling, happy people. We're always happy when the Lord touches us. Can't help but be happy. Amen. Eleven and verse one. The whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from east, they found a place in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose tops is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, and let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased the building of the city. Therefore it is called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Every time you hear someone speak in a foreign language, it is a confirmation that the word of God is true in Genesis chapter 11. I think about it all the time. You know, and God did a good job when he confused it. I mean, he really confused it. <laughs> he split it up even in countries like the Philippines. You know, they have Tagala, and they have Ilocano, and they have something else and something else. And some, some nations have four and five different dialects within the nation. You know, even in America, we have, you know, the southern accident. Well, I do declare. Y'all come over now. We'll have some vittles, you hear? You, man, you can't hardly understand the language, right? And you go to Hawaii, and they speak pidgin. And say, hey, why for you do that? Where is the kind? Over there, the kind. You know, the kind. Pick it up, the kind. And you don't know what they're, you know. You feed them a meal, and they say, hey, bro, Ono grinds, broke them out. You don't even know what they say. Ono is the fish in Hawaii. It means delicious. Ono grinds means you ate it. Broke the mouth means it was so good it broke my mouth. Ono grinds bra broke my mouth. <laughs> so, you know, that's, but that's all English, but that's just their dialect. So we have all these different, we, even within a nation like America, even with the English, we have all these different dialects. And so when God came down and divided it, he really divided it. God does everything well. <laughs> he does division well. And he does multiplication well. And addition well. And subtraction. He's a master in all four of the arts. <laughs> and so we want to turn now over to Acts chapter 2. Amen. You ought to have this underlined in red. This is the Pentecostals national anthem right here. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 through 11. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled uh, with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who spake Galileans? How is it we hear in our own language in which we were born? Parthenians and Medes and Elamites 
those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygyra and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? Amen? Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you today on, on lost in Babel and found in Pentecost. Because what man's rebellion lost in Babel has been found in the New Testament with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to catalog and character reference a little bit Genesis chapter 11 because it didn't take long for sin to, to ferment and to grow together and to coalesce and to make up a rigid system. The first system of sin on the earth was from Nimrod. His name means mighty hunter and he was the first man to start organized rebellion against God. He was the first man to build wall cities on the earth so that men could be protected and safe and they could dwell together in a harmonious fashion and have safety. And so he built the first Babylon. And he built a ziggurat, which is a, a, a station of high tower. And in that tower, they were studying the stars. Now, it says they were to climb to heaven, but we know and they know that they were not going to build a, a stairway to go to heaven. But I believe what they were doing was studying the constellations. And the Bible declares that the handiwork and the mysteries of God are revealed in the constellations in the heavens. And I think that Satan was trying to give them the secrets of the universe and the heavens by studying the stars. So that when God came down and confused the language, he not only confused that, but he confused the understanding about the 12 signs of the zodiac. And I think that man ever since then has been ensnared in confusion in that area. But we look and we find that Nimrod was a very powerful leader and he organized people together. Now the Bible is very clear about the power about the power, and you can put up the first slide if you would, about the power of Babel. The power of Babel was such that when men came together speaking the same language and they were, they were huddling together in masses in unity to rebel against God, that God gave the testimony that nothing will be impossible to them. Man didn't say that. God said that. God said nothing will be impossible to men who come together and form rebellion against me. In other words, there's not going to be any end to it. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to disperse it. I'm going to have to repel it. I'm going to have to divide it. And that's why the dividing came. Because unity is a very powerful thing. Let me say it again. Unity is a very powerful thing. If two of you will agree on earth, it will be done by my Father is in heaven. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of you. Why? Two have walked in unity. Two are believing together. Two or three bring my presence down. Unity is a powerful thing. Show me a marriage that has unity and I'll show you a strong, powerful message. Uh, marriage. Show me a church that is in unity and I'll show you a powerful church that cannot be defeated by any force of hell. Show me a, a, a corporation that has unity in it. I remember years ago, uh, Pat Robertson, I've followed his ministry a lot and I've read his uh, biographies and, and his, his books and I love a lot of his teaching. And He was talking about how the, they were at a crucial stage many years ago at 700 Club, and they were trying to get the university built. Now they've got over 10,000 students there now at Regent University, and it has several graduate programs, and they're growing, and they're putting in a law school and all kinds of things now. But he said they were, they were struggling, and he said we were out of money, and we couldn't, we couldn't get to going on it. And it looked like we were going to lose the school. We needed dorms. We needed classrooms. We needed help. And he said there was such division. He said people were snipping and 
talking and gossiping and, and, and there was all this division on the campus. And he said, so I called together a staff meeting of everybody that works for CBN and for the university and, he, and all the people that work for us. And he said, I told them straight up, look, if we don't stop the, the, the disunity, if we don't stop the gossip, if we don't stop talking about this and fighting against this, we're going to be defeated. If we'll come in unity together, and he said, I want you to do just one thing. I want you to believe that God has put this university here and that he's going to bring it to fruition and he's going to finance it and I want you to stand with me. And if you'll stand with me and will not talk against this and not talk against me and not talk against each other, but if we'll come together and believe God will put this money together and will help us to build this university. And he said there was a spirit of unity that came over them as he spoke and they all lifted their hands and said we will stop gossip we will stop disunity and we will believe with you we will stand behind you and he said within one year the funds came in the dorms were built and now it's been on a constant growth cycle ever since then folks there's no end to unity when you get in unity you got power when you get in unity the spirit of the lord comes somebody say amen and this church is in unity. We believe. You know, you love me and I love you. I, at least I assume that you love me or you wouldn't be here. Amen. At least you should like me. Amen. You know, but maybe love is too strong a word. But you believe in what I'm preaching. You believe the gospel is coming forth. You stand in unity with this church. You stand in unity with the presence of God. You stand in unity with what the Spirit of God says to you. When you do that, <clears throat> you bring power to this church. You bring power to your family. You bring power. There is no end to unity. Somebody say amen. amen. So what was lost? Well, what, what came about is unity was very powerful. Nothing seemed impossible. And in Pentecost, what started at 500 had to end up in 120. 500 were sent to the upper room, but they weren't in unity, obviously, because the, as 10 days went by, 380 left. But the 120 that stayed were there in one accord. The Bible is very clear. They were in one accord. They were in unity. Somebody say amen. And as we stand together in unity, there is no end to the power of God. The Holy Spirit didn't need. He could have done it with 12 in unity. He can do it with two in unity. But he had 120. Is there anybody here that's in unity with who God is in your life and what God is doing for you in this church? Can you lift up your hand and say, Pastor, I'm with you. I stand behind you 100%. I believe God is going to visit us. I believe God's going to do what he said in this church. Somebody say amen in the house of the Lord. Amen. The second slide, please. They separated themselves into walls of their own making at Babel. They separated themselves into walls. They were the first people to build walls. They separated themselves for the sake of unity. In order to have unity, you have to separate yourself. There's no place for you to be on Sunday but here. Watching Trinity is not the same. You need to come into unity with this church. You need to be where you're supposed to be. You need to separate yourself from some friends that are trying to take your unity away from you. What fellowship has light with darkness? I don't mean no, don't know anybody that's unsaved. I mean don't hang with them. Don't make them your buddy. Don't spend time with them. What fellowship has light with darkness? Come out and be separate, saith the Lord. And at Pentecost, God didn't just pour this on anybody. He poured it upon those who were willing to separate themselves behind the walls of God's making. The walls of obedience. Somebody say amen. amen. The will of God this week was for us to come together as the ecclesia of the church and to be together to pray every night. And as we did that behind these walls, God has heard us and answered us. Can I hear an amen? What Babylon did, God through Pentecost put back together. And he used the pattern of Babel to undo it, to bring about the unity and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to show it to you this morning. Number three, the fruit, Babel was the fruit of rebellion. Babel was man saying, we will be God. 
I will be God. I did it my way. I'll find another way. No thank you to you, God. No thank you to your plan. No thank you to your cross and your Jesus. We don't want you. We'll make our own way. That's rebellion. That's what witchcraft is. That's what all of this stuff is all about. We want to make God into our own image. We want to be our own gods. So they were the first big rebellion on the face of the earth. And they were the fruit of it. And it manifested. You know, Nimrod had a secret cult. And he had a wife named Semiramis. And she had a, a, a child by whoredom. And they invented this thing. They said that he was a god. And that the dolphins, he was hatched in the form of an egg. And the dolphins pushed him to the shore of the island of Istar. I-S-T-H-A-R. And when the dolphins pushed the egg up on the island that it hatched and he became the promised seed and they put him back in Babylon's walls and made God out of him and you had to get drunk and go through a secret cultish uh, oath in order to get into the, to the cult. So it was man mimicking God. Hello. Amen. That's where we get the word Easter from. That's why we have Easter eggs. It's actually from the cult. Babylonian cult from Istar. <laughs> but it's okay because we celebrate the greatest day in Christianity. <laughs> we turn, God gets the victory out of it anyway. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But they separated themselves into walls of their own making. But at Pentecost, 500 separated themselves behind the walls of God's making. And it was the fruit of rebellion versus the fruit of obedience. You know, understanding the gospel is not hard. It's not, in, it's not for the extremely intelligent. You don't have to be super intelligent, have a degree in schooling in order to be a Christian. All you got to do is have a humble spirit of obedience. Oh, Christianity is so simple intellectually to appertain, but it is so hard to follow because it demands losing yourself and becoming humble and obeying. Somebody say amen. amen. Obey it. Obey it. Do we like it when we're corrected? Do we accept readily? Do we say easily, I'm sorry? Do we take blame when we did the wrong thing? It's one thing for a person in a company to mess up. It's another thing for them to hide it and to blame it on the, the co-worker then that person shows you that they don't have the humility that they need to be in the fruit of obedience. Amen. Amen. See, Christianity is not hard to understand. It's just hard to obey because our flesh doesn't want to obey anybody. Amen. In Babel, they were driven. Give me the next slide, please. They were, given by, they were driven by pride. The rebellion was fed because of pride. And, be, and, and the people at Pentecost, they were driven because of obedience to prayer. When you obey, you pray. When you obey, you pray. When you obey, you pray. If you disobey, you don't pray. Amen. The next slide, please. It was in response to God's unity against him that brought heaven down. Response to God's unity against him, against God, that brought him down. And in Pentecost, it was response, God's response to the unity for him that brought heaven down. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't it good to know that when you pursue the Holy Ghost, you may not get everything you want, but you know that what God has promised is in your future. And you can be happy in the Lord. Because you know the greatest days are coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Next slide, please. God came down and divided with the tongue, resulting in confusion. They couldn't understand each other, so they split up, and they went to different areas of the world. And that's where all the different nations and all the culture, the ethnic groups came from because they went to different areas of the world because they couldn't understand each other. But at Pentecost, God came down and united with the tongue. Isn't it funny that the tongue is what 
is the key to everything in our life. If you can control your tongue, James says, you are absolutely in control of every other member of your body. Amen? And when God comes down and unites us with the Holy Spirit, He fills us with the Holy Ghost and gives us unity because of the language of heaven that comes down. Somebody say amen. When we speak in tongues, our understanding is unfruitful, but our spirit is edified. We're built up in the power of the Holy Spirit. We understand things that we don't know in our mind. Your spirit can understand things your mind can't comprehend. And the Holy Spirit touches your spirit, and He sets everything right. He makes everything that's wrong right. He takes every burden and lifts it off of you. He takes the crooked paths and makes them straight. He comes in and takes sadness and fills it with joy. He takes heaviness and gives you lightness and rejoicing. We've seen it this morning. People so happy that they're saved that they're shouting and dancing and running around this place. Why? Because God has come down in their spirit. Their mind doesn't have all the answers. Their mind didn't receive everything they have or believing for, but their spirit found the answer. Their spirit in the Holy Ghost touching their spirit. They found joy. They found peace. They found answers. They found the touch of God. It's all about the spirit. Your spirit controls your mind. And as the Spirit of God touches your spirit, then everything in your mind. Have you ever noticed how peaceful you feel in your mind when the Holy Ghost touches your spirit? It's because once your spirit is set straight and restored, then your mind feels the peace and the power and the presence of God. Somebody say amen. The next slide says uh, that Babel was the birth of rebellion on the earth, but Pentecost was the birth of the church of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. It birthed the church. The Holy Spirit birthed the church. When they heard them speaking in other tongues, and it gives almost every nation that was present at the Feast of Pentecost, and it says all of these nations heard people speaking in their own tongue, glorifying God and lifting up God and praying praising God. And they said, how can it be? We're from Syria. And we hear them. How can it be? We're from Africa. And we're hearing them speak in the praises of God. Because God broke down every wall. And the Holy Spirit always breaks down all the walls. Uh, and the communication, it always works. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your dysfunction is. It doesn't matter what your family came was or wasn't. Uh, it is only in the Holy Spirit. He can take it all and heal it and restore it. The church was birthed through the Holy Spirit. Rebellion was birthed through Babel, but it was found back again when the Holy Spirit birthed the church in the heart of 120 people and it spread to the entire known world. Somebody say amen. I want you to know Pentecost speaks the language of every human heart. It unravels all the mysteries. It heals every hurt. And we are complete in Him. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Lost in Babel, but found in Pentecost. Hallelujah. And what we want is we want to go as Pentecostals with the Holy Ghost controlling our tongues. There's nothing, no bigger lesson that we can walk in, no bigger victory than to make sure that our words don't deny our faith, that our words don't repel the Holy Spirit, that our words don't grieve God but that our words edify and lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Stand with me, please. I want you to step out and come to the front this morning. We're going to pray together in the name of the Lord. As we pray together, God is going to do some good things for you. God's going to touch you this morning. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You're worthy to be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised Lord I love you and I worship you 
be praised. Lord, I love you and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Just lift those hands and worship the Lord. Just praise Him this morning. Lord, we love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. That's it, just worship him this morning. I worship you, Lord, I worship you. He deserves your praise. He deserves your worship this morning. Oh, he's worthy today. He's worthy today. He's worthy today. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. We worship. We worship. We worship. Sanda Baba Koto Tore Oh, hallelujah. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Touch her today, God. Lay your hand upon her, Jesus. Touch your people this morning, Lord. Lay your hand upon your people this morning, Jesus. Lay your hand upon your people this morning, God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Our God reigns. Our God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns, he's alive, he's alive, he is alive, oh yes. Jesus is alive. I want you to stretch forth your hand to this yellow board. These are the prayer requests that were put up for the week. We want to pray one final time over all of these needs from this church. There are souls that need saving. People need deliverance. People need abound by drugs and alcohol. People that need to find healing in their body. Full of We reach out, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We pray one final time over every need that's represented in this place. In the name of Jesus right now, God, touch us. Touch us. Touch us. As we touch this board by faith, as we touch these lives. Praise the Lord. Can you say a good amen in the house of the Lord? Amen. Man, we have some excellent food prepared, and so I'm going to pray over it now so that when you get in the line, amen, you'll be ready to eat. Praise God. Father, bless this food that we are about to receive. Bless it to every person and bless those that made this food. In Jesus' name, amen.